transparency system, and we saw that once we, we breathe in, nothing enters the lung, it diffuses into the bloodstream. Since the lung is semi permeable and thin. Now, this oxygen or this gas or gases that enter the bloodstream, what happens to soft gas? The blood moves the oxygen to every part of the body that needs or requires the oxygen. Not only oxygen, who sometimes could also be moved by the same bloodstream and the spiky waste products like carbon dioxide could also be moved by bloodstream to where they will be passed out. So I think that psychology system, which is just a system whereby materials within the body are moved from one point to the other where they are required or away from where they are no longer required. Note, circulatory system in plant is called transport system. It's called transport system in plant. And the transport system in plant is basically carried out by what we call vascular bonding. And vascular bonding it's made up of one, the friend, two, the xylem, and three, the crop cambium. The friend, the xylem, and the crop cambium. Remember, I told you, in circulatory system, materials are moved around the body, either useful materials are moved to the places where they are required, or waste products are moved away from places where they were produced to places where they will be passed out. Now, the thing that helps to move these things, or these materials, are generally called medium. Medium. Singular. Medium. Medium. In animals, the medium of transportation is the blood. The blood. In plants, the medium is just the fluid. Now, fluid means liquid. The fluid. Now, let me tell you this. In plants, circulatory system, I said, is basically carried out by the vascular bundle. And the vascular bundle is made up of the thread, the xylem, and the cup cambium. The thread carries food, food substance. The xylem carries water and mineral. Please take note of this point. The plant carries food substance. The xylem carries water and mineral material, which are basically the things that are moved. Yes. I want you to take note that the process whereby flame carries food is called translocation. Translocation. Why the process whereby xylem carries water or milk and mineral is called transpiration. Transpiration. Now let's go. What is transpiration? Now, about who said Whenever you see words end with I O N, you start by defining it as this is the process. Now, you see some point. Whenever you hear of transformation, what will come to your mind is flame and food. But there's something I want you to note. Where does food come from? The leaf. Where does the food go to? The roots. Take note. Food. Material is produced by the leaf, and after the production, it is moved to where it will be stored until when it is required. Now, in the day, there is sun, sunlight. The color of the synthesis in the process whereby green plant and patch their own food substance using 
carbon dioxide and water in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll. Now, what then is the importance of this sunlight? Sunlight during photosynthesis is used to perform what we call photolysis. Photolysis. Lysis in science means break. Photolysis light. Now, what happens is this. There are two phases or stages in photosynthesis. We have the dark stage or phase. And we have the light stage or phase. In the dark stage, what happens in the dark stage? Has to do with what happens first in the light phase. During the day, light helps to break water molecule. This is light into hydrogen ion and hydroxide ion. This is what is called photolysis. Light breaking water into hydrogen ion and hydroxide ion. Remember. The two materials we used, like the plant uses for photosynthesis, is water and carbon dioxide. Now, what happens to water? Now, you get in wire, or the only person you see a person like, what is the fate of water? At least, what happens to water? The fate of water usually is determined in the light phase, whereby sunlight breaks water molecule into hydrogen ion and hydrogen ion. Finish. Now, what's the three, the four, even six, four, five? Now we are the plants now approaching the dark stage. The dark stage, what now happens? This hydrogen ion now moves to the dark stage. Dark stage. So means the carbon dioxide. This is where the C six eight twelve. You see, the food is for you. can see hydrogen. How many do you see? One. Carbon, how many? Oxygen, how many? So the ratio is one, one ratio, two ratio, one. Look at it. One ratio, two ratio, one. But don't mind, this is not, this is just an hypothetical equation. So you see, the carbon dioxide, the water that the plant takes in. See what happens to each of them. First of all, the light helps to break the water molecule into hydrogen ion and hydrogen ion during the day. At night, this hydrogen ion will now move to what? To reduce the carbon dioxide to form the food produced by the plant. Now, this is the question. When is food produced in plant? So it's not the day. Of course, it is like it is not like ah, it's not like just for those days. It's not, it is actually not produced in the day. The light is just used to break the water molecule into hydrogen and water, so that we we'll have this reducing agent that will not go into the dark state to reduce carbon dioxide to produce the food. That's not. Now at night, the leaf has produced the food, but the food cannot remain on the leaf. The food is glucose. Glucose. Immediately the food is produced. The food has to be stored because it is not useful in the leaf. It will be converted to fructose. Once it is converted to fructose, it will now be transported down to a storage organ. Most of the storage organs, you know, the roots, the other part of the root is the root. Glucose cannot be transported down the stem. It has to be converted to glucose. That is why when you cut your plant, say your shrub, say your vegetable, the stem, break it and put it in your mouth. You see the juice there is sweet somehow. The sweet or should be because of the presence of glucose, not glucose. This is what I want to see here again. You will discover that food was moved from the leaf to the roots. Is it, is it an upward movement or a downward movement? Downward movement. Translocation is a downward movement. Now, what is translocation at the time? 
Translocation is the process whereby food material are moved from the leaf where they are produced to other parts of the plant's body where they are stored. Translocation is the process whereby food material are moved or transported from the leaf to other parts of the plant body, especially the roots where they are stored. Let's look at the desire now. Transpiration. Transpiration. Plants need water for a lot of process. And all our reasons need water for possible depletion. If you don't have water, your system will dry up. You need to sweat so that you, you feel cool. You need water to feel cool. Osmo regulation. Plants also require water so that they don't get dehydrated. Apart from that, plants need water for photosynthesis, as we have seen. And the water the plants get, the plant gets from the soil. And the plant taps the water through its roots and moves the water through the xylem up to the leaf where the water will be utilized. Transpiration, therefore, is defined as a process whereby water molecules are moved from the leaf, from the roots, through the stem. So the leaf. Transpiration is defined as a process whereby water molecules, including some minerals, are moved from the root through the stem to the leaf of the plant. And most times we see things like wet, like transpiration evaporation and evapotranspiration. Let's look up. I have a plant this way. This is the root in the soil. The plant taps water this way to the leaf. From this point to this point, movement of water and mineral from this point to this point is called transpiration. Transpiration. Water molecules did not leave the leaf at this point. Now, at the time, the water molecules will begin to leave the surface of the leaf to the atmosphere. This atmosphere. From the leaf to the atmosphere, it's not evaporation. Now, the process of life, water molecules move from the roots to the leaf and the atmosphere is called evapotranspiration. Evapotranspiration. So let's define that. Evapotranspiration is a process. Evapotranspiration is a process whereby water molecules move from the roots of the plant to so the leaf. And then to the atmosphere. And then to the atmosphere. It involves the transpiration of the water to the leaf and the evaporation of the water to the atmosphere. It involves the transpiration of the water to the leaf and the evaporation of the water to the atmosphere. We will come back to this. We are looking at circulatory system. And basically, what we want to look at the circulatory system in animals. Circulatory system is divided into two. One, open circulation. And two, closed circulation. Or you call it open circulatory system and closed circulatory system. So, circulatory system is divided into two. Okay, so two types. Open 
calculation and two close calculations. I want you to look up. See, when the medium of transportation, maybe the blood or blood, moves, just moves out of body, it's not passing through a channel. You know your pipe, water goes through your pipe, is that not? Now, water passing through your pipe is close circulation. But when it rains and you see erosion, is it passing through a channel? No, that is open circulation. So, if there are different kinds of animals. In other animals like you and I and Mama, we have what we call veins and arteries. So, the medium, which is basically the blood, passes through the vein and the artery and capillary. But in insects, for instance, there is no vein or artery. So, blood just flows. So, wherever the organ is that requires the oxygen and the blood pours on the organ. Pours on the organ. Then moves away, pours on this organ and returns. And that's why you see some of this one. Showing that blood is just air breathing. It's not passing through the channel. Let's go. Open circulation. Open circulation. This is a circulatory system. This is a circulatory system in which the medium of circulation or the medium of transport. This is a circulatory system in which the medium of transport is not carried through a channel. Is not carried through a channel. The medium only flows and pours on the organ, on the organs that require the food or the oxygen it carries. Close circulation system or close circulation, which is what we are going to deal with. Now don't forget. Purpose circulation, example of what using that specific purpose circulation is the insect. Close circulation. This is a circulatory system in which the medium of transportation e.g. blood passes through a channel e.g. vein and artery.
us the neck is jugular. Now the legs, the legs, legs, your hands and leg and it is in position. So why am I telling you this? When that of a blood vessel that carries blood to the kidney, the sort of renal vein, renal artery, the one that takes blood out, renal vein. Do you understand? So that's what the pulmonary. The one that carries blood out and carries your pulmonary lung, we have renal, pulmonary artery and pulmonary vein. So this is what happens. Now, this on the axe. So other parts, other organs. In the heart, other organs. These are the organs. of 
plot. From the lungs to the heart. And from the heart back to the lungs. The movement of blood from the lungs to the heart. And from the heart back to the lungs. In our next class, we will we'll continue where I will give you comprehensive notes with systemic circulation. Of course, you know systemic circulation will be the movement of blood from the heart to the other part of the body and from the other part of the body to the heart. That's all. We'll see again next week. Thank you. <laughs>